Good morning, all of you. Now we are back with the chapter Nazism and Rise of Hitler. As we have completed the topic that is related with First World War. Now we'll start the discussion Hitler's Rise to Power. Crisis in the economy, polity, and society form the background to Hitler's rise to power. Now we will discuss about earlier years of Hitler. Hitler was born in 1889 in Austria. He spent his youth in poverty. And when the First World War broke out, he joined the army and earned medal for bravery. In 1919, he joined a small group called the German Workers' Party. In 1923, Hitler planned to seize control of Bavaria, march to Berlin, and capture power. But he failed, was arrested, and tried for treason, and later released. He was a powerful speaker. His passion and his words moved people. Later, he became chancellor, that is head of Germany. But now we will discuss about how did the Nazi party come into existence? What status did he, it enjoy by 1932? As I told you, Hitler's participated in First World War and earned many medals for bravery in the First World War. But Germany's defeat horrified Hitler. The harsh and humiliating terms of the Treaty of Versailles made him furious. In 1919, he joined a small political group that is the German Workers' Party. He subsequently took over the German Workers' Party and renamed it the National Socialist German Workers' Party, known as Nazi Party. Till 1930s, the Nazis could not effectively mobilize support. It had merely 2.6% votes in the Reichstag, that is a German parliament. After 1929, that is Great Economic Depression. As banks collapsed, businesses shut down. Workers lost their jobs. Middle class were threatened with destitution, as we have discussed yesterday also. By 1932, the Nazis had become the largest party with 37% vote. This was largely due to the impact of the Great Economic Depression and effective Nazi propaganda which steered hopes of a better future. Hitler, which was a very powerful and effective speaker. He promised the people a strong nation where all would get employment. He placed a lot of emphasis on rituals, propaganda, and spectacles to mobilize people. Rallies and public meetings were held to demonstrate support for Hitler and install a sense of unity among people. Red banners with the swastik, Nazi salute, rounds of applause after speeches were part of spectral of power. Nazi propaganda skillfully projected Hitler as a Masiha, a savior, and one who had come to deliver the people from distress. 
it is an image that captured the imagination of a people whose sense of dignity and pride had been shattered and who one who had come to deliver the people from distress it is an image that captured the imagination of people whose sense of dignity and pride had been shattered and one who were living in a time of acute economic and political crisis now we will just discuss about the factors which contributing to the meteoric rise of hitler the most important point is political instability of the weimar republic which we have discussed yesterday as weimar republic failed to inspire confidence of the people in the democratic parliamentary system humiliating treaty of versailles the economic disaster due to this he was able to control the power now hitler promised to build a strong nation promised to provide employment and to weed out all foreign influences and resist all foreign conspiracies against germany now the destruction of demography when we are talking about destruction of democracy that was developed in 1933 on 30th january 1933 hitler was offered chancellorship of germany by president hindenburg and on 3 march hitler achieved the highest position in the cabinet of ministers on 3 30th january 1933 now once he got the power hitler set out to dismantle the structures of democratic rule a mysterious fire that broke out in the german parliament building in february after that the fire decree of 28 february 1933 indefinitely suspended civic rights like freedom of speech press and assembly that had been guaranteed by the weimar constitution then he turned on his arc enemies and that is communist most of whom were hurriedly packed off the new established concentration camps the repression of communist was severe out of 6808 arrest piles of dusseldorf a city of half a million population 1440 were those of communist alone they were however only one among of 52 types of victims persecuted by the nazi across the country on 3rd march 1933 the famous enabling act was passed <clears throat> and established dictatorship in germany this act gave all powers to hitler and established dictatorship in germany all powers to sideline parliament rule by decree all political parties and trade union were banned except for the nazi party and its affiliates 
the state established complete control over the economy, media, army, and judiciary. Now, special surveillances, security forces were created to control and order society in ways that the Nazis wanted. Apart from the already existing regular police in green uniform and the stormtroopers that included Gestapo, that is the secret state police, the SS, the protection squads, criminal police, and the security services. It was extraordinary constitutional powers of these newly organized forces that gave the Nazi state its reputation as the most dreaded criminals state. Now, after that, we will just discuss about the reconstruction by Germany. Hitler assigned the responsibility of economic recovery. And for that, he invited a great economist, Hesmer Sesche, who aimed at full production and full employment. That is through a state-funded work creation program. This project produced the famous German superhighways and the people's car, the Volkswagen. In foreign policies, also, Hitler acquired quick success. He pulled out of the League of Nations. In 1933, League of Nations was the international organization which was formed after the First World War. He just pulled out from that international organization reoccupied the Rhineland in 1936 and integrated Austria and Germany in 1938 under the slogan, one people, one empire, and the one leader. And then went to the rest German speaking Stutland from Czechoslovakia. In all of this, he had the unspoken support of England. Now, he chose war as a way out of the economic crisis. As resources were to be accumulated through expansion of territory, this quick success at home and abroad seemed to reverse the destiny of the country. Hitler did not stop here. Now, Seshi which was an economist, advised him against invest, investing hugely in rearmament as the state still ran on deficit financing. But he was a cautious. And for that, no place in Nazi Germany, Seche had to leave. Hitler chose war as the way out of the approaching his power, economic crisis. So in J September 1939, Germany invaded Poland, and this started a war with France and England. In September 1940, a three-party pact was signed between Germany, Italy, and Japan which strengthened the Hitler's claim to international power. Puppet resigns, supportive of Nazi Germany, were installed in a large part of Europe. And now, by the end of 1940, Hitler was at the pinnacle of his power. Hitler now moved to achieve his long-term aim of conquering Eastern Europe. He wanted to ensure food supplies and living space for Germans. He attacked Soviet Union. 
in June 1941. In this historic blunder, Hitler exposed the German Western Front to British aerial bombing and the Eastern Front to the powerful Soviet army. But when Japan extended its support to Hitler and bombarded Milt Pearl Harbor, the US entered the war. And till then, the US had resisted involvement in the war. It was unwilling to once again face all the economic problems that the First World War had caused. But it could not stay out of the war for long because of Japan. So when Japan extended its support to Hitler, now US was not having any options to enter the Second World War. And the war ended in 1945 with Hitler's defeat and Japan bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And this, what happened in the Second World War, we will now again discuss in the later classes.